can actually come to order since we have a quorum and we're not expecting anyone else. And first up is signed permit application for Foreign Auto Union 15 High Street. to add to this one, Julie? Um, I guess one question I have for you guys would be whether you actually consider that whole white background to be part of the sign since they're not taking it down. And why it can't mm -hmm. come down. Yeah, I mean, I thought about that where typically when you put a sign up, if it has a background, the entire background counts as its area. Exactly. But this, this sign has its own background. It does. It has a background in front of that piece of white. It's right. Like that. Right. Right. So if it took up the <laughs> whole white, the old white piece, would that be over the allowable? Because it's allowed. It's allowed about what 67, 68 yeah. square feet. Um, so it's 32. And that's about yeah, it. it probably would be too big. If if this four by eight dimension here is actually scaled, which it might not be. Oh, well, that bay is almost 14 feet. All right, if it's 12 feet high to the bottom of the sign, 12 and a half feet. Mm -hmm. Bay is about 14. 16, maybe well, 18. The, yeah, the thing that's there looks to be about 24. You know, it's about three times the width of the... Do we know anything about the, const the construction? I mean, is the... It sounded like the sign maker was a little concerned about mounting it to that. The sign maker wasn't. The owner of the building was. In the email um, from the owner specified that she'd have to do one of two or three different things if she wanted to mount it to the sign that's there. Okay, so that was from the owner of the building. I thought yes. that was from the sign. Okay. Is there depth to that, or is it really just flat white panels? Um, Do we know anything about it? Is the, is the applicant here? It says no, I don't think so. Did I write anything about depth? Mm. I don't think that I know a depth. Okay. I think it's supposed to be pretty flat. So that's an easy thing to fix. What about this mounting issue, though? Is the building inspector going to look at this? Is That's some, an easy thing to fix. Whether the panels have to come down or whether we can figure out a way to put it up there. Because, for example, if they put a black border around this thing, then it would comply, right? Because this white would just be the back of the building. There's no signage on the back, on the white piece. Right. So it could just be a decorative element. Right. And the building could be divided up into this three-part thing, and then this is just going on a piece of that. Right. So technically, if the white sign is a different white, it probably meets the definition of background. Yeah. Doesn't mean we don't want the white to come down. It just depends on what it is. I'm really concerned that it gets mounted properly you yes. know, from that memo. As was the building owner and me. Um, I guess they came to an agreement, the owner and the sign person, that as long as she, they really, they tighten the one that's behind and then they tighten the one that's going onto it, that it's okay. They tighten the screws. Okay. 
it's never our liability. <laughs> just, <laughs> it won't be in this case, no. Never, never is. Yeah. <laughs> well, some, I mean, if it was overhanging a public sidewalk. Yeah, it just wouldn't yes. want to fly off and sort of make its way down the street. But. Right. But that one looks like it's set back enough that it's overhanging private property. Yeah, it is. So just don't park your car there. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure what, where our uh, authority extends in this case. I mean, uh, in terms of the signed bylaw, it's fine as long as the it doesn't fall off the building. But I'm not sure that that's you know, part of the signed approval. Mounting it. The mounting of the sign? The, the building inspector will definitely be asking about that. Um, so she'll have this conversation a second time with him. Yeah. Okay, so whether the sign. You know, it's an appropriate sign. We did. <laughs> So we can, we can certainly give it the certificate of appropriateness with the note that uh, um, it has to be suitably affixed to the to the property. Correct. And as far as whether the whole white background counts as its sign, I would say that it doesn't. I would say it doesn't. And our definition for say loose. Loose signs and elements is that you draw the rectangle around the entire thing, and whatever's encapsulated in that counts as your area, right? right. The outermost extremes of that rectangle. So that could be applied to here, even if the, the new background blends in with the old background, because there's nothing going on on the rest of it. Not like they've got a logo over here and a right. Napa symbol over there. So. Right. so I would say that it's okay for that. Any thoughts? interesting because I don't think that center bay is divided, right? I mean, this whole it's one big space inside. It's just a couple is that of. Right? I, it, I can't imagine that they built it with walls in between. Well, I asked if um, Weavers was separately owned and separately. It's a separate business, and they said yes. It's a separate, totally separate entity. I'm sure it is. I'm sure they're renting a bay inside a three bay building. Mm -hmm. For future considerations, let's say you had a three bay building like this, completely not separated inside, right? They share a bathroom or whatever. As opposed to tenanted spaces that we split up and then say, this is your slot, here's your sign. Mm -hmm. right? This is a multi business building, all mm -hmm. occupying one space, and they're all allowed to sign. Yeah. CBDC approve the certi certificate of appropriateness for the um, sign. <laughs> well, it's the, specifically for um, for an auto union sign at 15 High Street, Reading, Mass. Or a second. Sure. Um, you have a question on the certificate of appropriateness. We don't need to do it as amended, right? That's just a question you're asking to us. Yeah, it's just a question for consideration. I can take. I can. I'll cross it off. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. All in favor? Okay. Do you have two sets? Should I give you a second one? 
Bank. So this one they're proposing two wall signs and I need to edit the certificate of appropriateness on the first page to say wall signs instead of blade sign. Um, here can I take those? Oh. And I believe Hazel's here. Hi. Do you have Hi. Yeah. There were comments that you were confused about how it was lit. Yeah, I didn't really quite understand <coughs> the halo lighting. Okay. Green on white, white on green. I can walk you through that. Too, sure. It looks like the letters are lit in front of the panel, and then the panel is lit behind it. That's so correct. So there's a white glow around the big green rectangle, and then a green glow glow around the letters. Actually, in this case, it's just the opposite. There's going to be a green glow around the TV and a white Letters. glow around the background. Right. I'm sorry, mm. but that's the So how do you get the white glow around the background? Um, that's what I don't understand. I can show you. I'm okay. Hazelwood Hopkins for the record to Phoebe Way with the mass. I'm a signed permit consultants representing TV Bank. The TD logo is a separate entity, a separate piece of the sign right. mounted with the standoffs. Mm -hmm. There'll be lighting, the uh, halo lighting in here for that piece. Mm -hmm. Then this piece, which is the flat aluminum surface, will have halo lighting around this edge. So this stands off of the green background. Mm. Okay, so it has, so there's like lighting around the edge? Just a silhouette of light. Okay. Okay. So the TD face will not be lit, and the green face of the background piece will not be lit. Okay. So it's a soft light, much softer than internal, and uh, just shines. The um, halo light of the TD will, will kind of bounce off of the green background, right. and the halo light around the green will bounce off of the face of the building, and that's where you get the lighting. So the letters are all aluminum, right? The That's sides correct. are aluminum as well? Aluminum. The sides are aluminum as aluminum, well? Aluminum, yes. Right. Yes. And what happened with Buildmore? They, they painted the front face with a plastic letter, but the side is plastic, so the light just shoots out the sides. <laughs> they fabricate it out of aluminum and they bend it. <clears throat> okay, and the same for that panel. And the same for the panel. That's correct. Okay. 
Uh, and then there's a question about them having three signs and only wanting two. Two are allowed, we're told. Yeah, and on the um, submitted elevations, there was a note that they want to keep the existing. They'd like to keep it. It's on the back of the building. It's over the drive through There's a side street back there. I'm sorry, I didn't catch the name of it. It runs parallel with Main. Yeah, Ash. Ash street. Thank you. And there's an entrance from Ash into the back lot. So they would like to keep it if possible, but these are the two primary signs that they're interested in displaying. So it's this one right here? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Any other questions? I've forgotten what our, uh, since they have access, uh, driveway access from both the front and the back of the building. We've yeah. already done this. We've done this three times. Okay. We did it with the TV bank, right? Because they have that back entrance off of the public lot. Mm -hmm. And they wanted two signs, but they could only get. I think they put it on Haven Street instead of uh, Main Street, I believe. Did they get a variance? No. Uh, T you mean the Eastern Bank? Uh, no, isn't it TD Bank? Yeah. What's in the Mon Building? Northern Bank? Northern Bank. Northern Bank, Northern Eastern Bank. Bank, TD Bank, whatever. <laughs> Three and two, isn't it? Okay, so the Mon Building, they came in with the same thing. They wanted a sign over their entrance off of the parking lot. They wanted a sign on Main Street and a sign on Haven Street. But they're only allowed two signs. Okay. And then Reading Cooperative recently had some carved lentils that had signage in them. Mm, right. And adding signs would have made it three. So we've been sticklers for the rule where it says you only allowed two to only have two. The solution, of course, is to put a blade sign in front. Why isn't this a blade sign in front? I mean, you'd get much better visibility up and down Main Street. I, I think you're right about that, but they did propose two flush, two flush mounted. Well, uh, Can they have a blade sign in addition to two yes. parallel wall signs? Yes. 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 So that would be how they would get three signs. <coughs> well, they have offered to remove the one in the back if it's a sticking point for you. These uh, are the primary signs that they're most interested in. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to find a good solution, but I, I don't want to well, break got the, the rules. Um, they're allowed, certainly, the wayfinding. I mean, the directional. Um, for the drive-through, I mean, is there some kind of? Just identify the drive-through. It's not just a brand new one. Yeah. Yeah, we don't allow like logos on those. Right. What does uh, Co-op have? Reading Co-op have on their canopy? Right. They've got a drive-through off of Sanborn. I don't know. What's that? Have they got a drive-through? Oh, it's just a red canopy. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Can't memorize everything. <laughs> <laughs> There's a canopy there with the drive through so I'm wondering whether they have additional signage, what their wayfinding signage is. But again, we got stuck, got stuck on the three sign issue with the other two banks. Right. Because of the same conditions, right? There's a back and there's a front. How much square footage would they be allowed on a pole mounted um, directional sign? Eight square feet. Three. That, that might be a solution Eight. at the back driveway to have a. Can they have their a bank ID on that? Mm. I don't think. Cool. Well, actually, I don't. It's, it's just a sort of kind of, Yeah. At least it's a little hard to tell what it looks like it. But that's Haven Street. What's on the other side? You don't go in that way. I never drive in this town. <laughs> Don't look at me. Keep going. Okay. The driveway's right up there. Way up there by the... There you go. I especially don't drive to a bank that's three feet from my office. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that just is the clearance, the height clearance. Yeah. Right. It's a little back. Yeah, I mean, the ATM itself has, has sort of uh, colors and banding on it. I 
Yeah, but the screen probably says, you know. Yeah. So they could do one of these signs. They could leave the back sign. They could do one of these new flat signs, and they could have a blade sign. Mm -hmm. Would we have to reapply in that case? I think you'd have to give Julie something that lets her know what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, you could probably craft your approval to approve this if they remove the back one or approve the back one and one of the side ones if they propose a blade sign. We could do that if okay. we, we could say the blade sign will generally look like this. Right. It can be illuminated as well. It can with, yeah, with um, external illumination. External. Or halo. halo. Yeah. And if it projects over the public sidewalk, is that an issue? No, nope, sure? not for blade signs, no. Blade signs can They have to be at least eight feet above the oh, sidewalk, they and they can't project more than four feet out from the building facade. So an eight foot clearance and a four foot projection. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's all in the bylaw, yeah. Yeah. and we can talk about it offline. Mm -hmm. But if you're up in the band, you know, up where this one would go, which is probably where you want to be anyways, so it looks like you're well over eight feet. Mm -hmm. On the way back, I'll stop and take a little look. And then if they were to propose a traffic control sign in the back entrance, Julie, can you tell me uh, if they can have any bank ID on it? It can't have a logo on it. It can or it can't? It cannot. So that brings us to the new signage bylaw, right? Well, that was the we regulations didn't there. change. The regulation didn't change. You know that. I know. Right. Oh, no. What do you mean? Like, what's allowed now was allowed before. We just reworded things. Okay. Just thinking content, that's all. Making sure. Right. I'm to remember it all. <laughs> right. So we don't typically allow. But you can leave the big sign over the um, drive through as you have it now. Yes. We'll, we'll offer it to the bank and see what they want to do. That's the only thing we can do to allow all three sides. Thank you for working that out. All right, so, are there any questions or issues with these signs, with this particular sign, the one that's proposed? No, yeah, I think it's a nice, nice approach. So the green halo behind the white letters on the green background keeps it, what, from whiting out, from getting too white, as opposed to just having a white? Yes, I believe so. It's very subtle. Because it's already a green background, so yeah. there'd be some green glow coming off of it. Well, and I mean, it's but lumens. I mean, it's the uh, it does make it more visible. I don't know if the Duncan has signage on the back. I'm um, pretty sure the uh, it's not illuminated. I mean, it's it's the um, projecting letter. I mean, the block letter set away from the background, but I don't think it's illuminated. You're talking about the front ones. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about the front sure, the on Ash Street. Well, they don't have a drive-through, so... No, they barely have drive-through. <coughs> <Right. laughs> okay, let's... Uh, yeah, it's so far enough back to we, You guys were talking about time ago, that's not you. Oh, they have a sign in the back. Yeah. yeah. Is it lit? Yes, and they've only got one sign on the front. So there you go. I guess it's, it's set far enough back, I think. I mean, the drive through is going to have lighting. It's going to have canopy lighting underneath it, anyways. It's not like a dark, dark space. Right. All right, let's figure out this um, certificate of appropriateness to be able to give them some options here. Well, do we need to, uh, do they need to, to reapply uh, with a different? I'll just have her revise the sign permit if 
they decide they want the blade sign before we give it to the building inspector. But I think we can craft the certificate of appropriateness in a way that allows for either scenario. Okay. It says proposed blade sign. I know. I yeah, she's, she's <laughs> mentioned that. Yeah. <laughs> so you were almost right. <laughs> I was almost right. I, I was thinking, why aren't they proposing the blade sign? Then they could have to. So in number finding number two then. Do we want to put this in the findings or in the conditions? Because the findings say they are proposing two wall signs. I think that should say they are proposing yeah. one new wall sign or one new wall sign and a blade sign. Well, no. It would say Okay, I see what you're saying. So change the findings to what something that reflects the conversation right now. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. On the east or north. One new wall sign on the east or north. Yeah. Or alternately. Right. One new and one blade. One new wall sign and one blade sign. Right, and then you could add language in there if you want about submitting something on the blade sign to you, but generally it'll be in keeping with the, the construction of this mm -hmm. sign or the look of this right. submitted sign. In the conditions, put the, the blade sign? Okay. Yeah. it today just to see how fast I could see stuff. Those trees are really blocking a lot of them. There's two trees in front of it that are yeah. pretty dense. In full leaf. Yeah. But I still think you'll see the blades on, you know, from way up and way down. Okay, so we have a an amended version. Mm -hmm. Move that the CPDC approve the certificate of appropriateness for uh, TD Bank at 470 Main Street as amended. Sure. All in favor? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Julie. Can I have a coffee as well? I'll be in touch with you. Yes. Probably in the afternoon. I don't think online. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Do you want me to note on this? Uh, any proposed blade sign would be similar or? Sure. Okay. No, I actually worked with the guy at Seriously? Bergmeier, yeah, and he perfect. corrected them, and then they still sent the wrong ones to the sign applicant. Wow, they must really be desperate I for work. <laughs> because I do have a, actually 
corrected set of elevations, but the ones they submitted are wrong. So I just hand wrote on it. That's what you have to look forward to. An architect with 20 years experience. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I was speaking to I think I was I was speaking to a kid, I think. I have a good friend who works in Bergmeyer actually. And I dealt with a lot of people at Bergmeyer when they built the T V bank in Concord. This one, I mean, the venturing theatricals piques my curiosity because the, I did theater work uh, high school and college. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is. The uh, uh, founder and owner of Phoebus Lighting out in California was one of my good buddies at school. Floating Lotus in this space before? It was not. It was a uh, Pure Fit Studio. Oh, Pure Fit, yes, of course. Okay. All right, now we have a sign application for Venturing Theatricals 34 Gold Street. This is just the blade sign. Yes? Yeah. This. Okay. I don't recall seeing any notes from you, Julie, that you have any issues with this one? No, I don't think so. It seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, I didn't have any problems with it. No. I like your idea that you're trying to do something a little different with the coloring for it. And the blade sign itself is nice. Mm -hmm. How much of the space are you taking? It's the bottom floor. The whole bottom floor? The full bottom floor, yes. Can we ask just what goes on? What are you going to be doing? Yeah, uh, so we do uh, summer programs. So we put on uh, one musical a year. We've done it for the past few summers. And uh, now we're looking to expand into uh, theater classes during the school year as well in other smaller theater productions. So it's kind of we're using the exact setup that was already there, just putting some new paint up and um, hopefully seeing what happens. You do stuff, you'll do it all in there or will you rent space? Uh, we rent our summer musicals performed at the high school here and then probably our smaller shows will be at Park Middle School performing spaces. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, any questions? Okay. Move that the CPDC approve the certificate of appropriateness for venturing theatricals at 34 Gold Street. Second. All in favor? Great. Thank you. And thank you for the abbreviated application. Which I <laughs> you are very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Economy of paper. Right. I'd like to, so Good I'll job. send you a finalized version tomorrow, and then um, I'll give it to the building inspector, and he'll issue a building permit for it. So you can come pick that up. Okay. Sure. Good luck.
continuation request for Bonnie Estates. Mm -hmm. Zero Harold. We need to do anything with that? Vote to continue it to um, June 26th. And don't say a time. I don't know. There's a few things that may or may not happen that night, so I'd like to keep it open so I can mm -hmm. schedule. Um, Wisely, I guess, as I know more. <laughs> okay, move that the CPDC continue the public hearing for the preliminary subdivision of Bonnie Estates at Zero Herald Avenue until the evening of June 26th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You all got that email today with the letter from the abutters, right? Yeah. We shouldn't talk about that now, though. No, no, I'm just saying that you have more information that you need to review before the next meeting. Were you here for 30, for, um, for Bonnie Estates? We were told that would be this evening. Yeah, and the agenda that was posted a few days ago reflected that they were seeking a um, request to continue. I And I had spoken to a couple people in the neighborhood, and they had indicated they were going to let the rest of the neighborhood know, but you can always reach out to me um, at any point leading up to the the hearing to find out if it's going to happen or not. I apologize. Okay. I didn't know. And I just want to say that um, it was indicated that neighbors would be contacted for this. We live on Harold Avenue. We were not contacted at all. When was it indicated that you would be contacted? Uh, in the first, um, the first, uh, when it was first proposed, and then it was indicated in the hearing that uh, one of the people representing um, the, the proposal would be reaching out to the neighbors, and that did not happen. Um, did you receive a legal notice in the mail about the hearing, about the first hearing? The first hearing, yes. Yeah. And we were told that there wouldn't be any um, additional communication aside from a posting. Right. But we were also told that evening that they would be reaching out to the neighbors. Okay. I can't speak for them. No, no, I understand that. I'm just putting it out there. So we have not heard from them. You can always contact my office um, if, you're, if you have any questions or if you're wondering if the hearing's going to happen. Okay. So do you expect it to go beyond June 26th? I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen actually at this point. I do not have any information. Okay. Thank you. That's an honest answer. Oh, <laughs> I know it's not what you wanted to hear. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. All right. Um, meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. Do we have more more than one set? I only saw one set online. Did you sneak these in? Okay. I thought I uploaded them both. You might have. I guess I didn't see the second set. Sorry. I did do them both in time for the packet. Okay. Well, when I looked earlier, they were both there. Okay. Normally, if I am going to add stuff, I tell you. I'm just trying to remember which one I looked at now. It was that compelling? Well, <laughs> there were just no comments. I had no comments on it. It was the... Uh, I had already looked at 419, and I didn't have any comments on that April 19th. I have no comments on that one either. Karen, do you have anything on 19, 419?
Okay. I move that the CPDC approve the minutes for the meeting of April 19th, 2017. All in favor? May 22nd. May 22nd. There was a one word typo somewhere, but I can't. <laughs> of the minutes, there's the bottom paragraph. Um, it says, due to lot constraints, determined that the four-unit building would be oh, yeah. more appropriate for the site. Good. Yeah. You were wondering where that one went, where that fee had gone? That was the only thing that I noticed. Page three. And this proposed guardrail will be modified to a cable wire system. Is that a normal description? Yeah, I think that's as good as we're going to get. Okay. Page four, one, two, three, the third paragraph. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tuttle commented. The second line says each other. Looks like it's one word. Oh, okay. Second line where? Uh, the second line of the third paragraph on page four. Mm -hmm. Under my name. Under Mr. Could Tuttle. And insert a space. Oh, I always put that one together. I will separate it for you this one time, but I don't think it's a typo. What? <laughs> what yeah. kind of English is that? What kind I of grew up with an English teacher English mother always well, correcting me. So. There's uh, the word another and another are two two different. Look at that. I'm failing. You're right. I've seen two things so far. In standard English, each other is always two words, and each other is never used. There you go. You're not correct. It. Thank you. Go home now. <laughs> Anything else? Did you ever get that letter, by the way? I did. Oh. I got it like the day after. Mm -hmm. Extension. I don't have anything else. Karen, you all set? Move that the CPDC approve the minutes for the meeting of uh, May 22nd, 2017, as amended. All in favor? 3 0. What else do you have for us? Something good? No. Oh, no, Burger King. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I have not heard a word. I mean, besides what we've told you in the past that they went to do the refacing of it and they discovered that the roof system was um, not structurally sound. Oh, okay. So they had, yeah, this was many months ago. Yeah, I don't recall hearing Yeah, that. sorry, I thought we had said that at some meeting. You may have. Yeah. Okay, um, and so they basically had to close the building. It can't be occupied. 
So they're sure. work and and to my knowledge, they're working on it. But I, mm. I'm usually the last to know. So. Okay, so they have to figure out a way to fix that. Roof. Right. Do, do we think it was substandard by design or substandard because of many years of deferred mm. maintenance and deterioration? Wow. I would think. Um, although I I don't I don't know that for a so fact. In the old days. In the old days, I can say that now, because I'm old. When they did those prefabricated tr wood trusses that are likely in there, the, the fireproofing that they would put into the wood would react with the, those plates that they used to oh, hold okay. the joints together, and it would corrode the plates. So oh. they, would, they wouldn't they would be structurally sound. That could be what happened. Maybe that's what happened here, yeah. If they're Because that building's old enough for that. Definitely. Yeah, so if there was ever a fire and something like that, the firefighters would never go on that roof if they knew it was that construction because they just collapse. Right. Yeah. Read that sentence. Yep. Yeah, right. There's been some activity, I guess, on uh, Perfectos. Yeah, they're, as well. they're I think, Slowly getting close. Along. They're getting close, I think. Did the Karate Studio, my neck of the woods, is now some sort of dance studio. Which, um, uh, I didn't hear you, sorry. Freestyle American Karate there? The yeah, the old ones. Opposite the TJ Maxx? I mean, opposite the Home Goods? Home Goods, yeah. Just in the karate studio. Driving home at night, and all of a sudden well, there's a dance studio karate, sound just right. like drilled in over the old karate studio sound. Um, <laughs> we have, if my memory serves me correctly, we have contacted them about pulling a permit for the sign. Okay. If it's the, what's the name of the dance studio? Is it Elite something? <laughs> Freestyle American Dance. We're, we, we're like it's all over the place get, trying to get people to comply with things. So, I th I, and I believe yes. that I former Karate Studio is one of them that we've been construction inside too already. Been reaching out to. So. So they didn't pull a permit for the construction either, then, potentially. The refit, I yeah. will look into that for you tomorrow. No. Fortunately, people that work in the building department also live in town, some of them, so, and are very aware of what's mm -hmm. going on around town. So, mm -hmm. I like to think not that many obvious commercial projects fall through the cracks, but I'll check. Yeah, this is going to end up having a high occupancy, so it's a safety issue. Yeah. You know, they're going to do recitals and junk like that in there, and they're going to jam with people. Well, but that's oh, yeah, that's before. generally true, even with the karate. Uh, sure, but studios. so that was an approved plan. What if they start putting partitions up and cutting off exits right. and things like yeah. that? They don't yeah. have their exit signs and right. mess up the sprinkler layouts or things like that. Happen. Well, clearly, it needs to be permitted. I'm sure, sure. <laughs> that's why. You know, it's not just painting walls and yeah, yeah something like that. You saw the um, relief note for that. The, 40B over by Walker's Brook or Lakeview I have. A letter? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And when I didn't drive by there, just for just for some of it. Two-year or one-year pass on the You have a, the zoning board has the ability to not continue. Not they have to open the hearing and then decide what to do within 15 days whether they want to continue with it, if it's a project that they think, you know, that the applicant's been working with the town and it's a project that might benefit the town and maybe it won't be a super painful process and yada, yada, yada. Um, but they can exercise the right to make the applicant wait until February of 2018 to reapply. They have a little more leverage, so, to, so potentially. To continue with the hearing, right. I should say. Yeah, so they have that, they, they'll be the decision makers on that. Okay. Um, so with some input from staff and other boards, most likely, once we get to that point. But it's not, hasn't been filed with the town yet, so. Mm -hmm. um, it's coming. Okay, move to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Abstaining? Okay, I like that <laughs> kind of meeting. You gotta stay on. These night. are good summer meetings. I do my best, although I think your next meeting could end up being quite long. Oops. Just what day is it? June 26th, please come. Oh, yeah. Everybody, well, come one, come all. <laughs> um, if